On this week's episode of Wide Open Throttle, Hyundai aims for small car domination. Chrysler's next muscle car gets an Italian connection. Ford doubles down on EcoBoost. And Paul Horrell gets an exclusive first look at the Aston Martin Zagato. Welcome to Wide Open Throttle. I'm Jesse Lang, and leading this week's automotive news is Hyundai's small car surge. Hyundai plans to increase the pressure on small car segment leaders Toyota, Chevy, and Honda by launching two new versions of its strong-selling Elantra, a two-door coupe and a four-door hatchback, both revealed yesterday at the Chicago Auto Show. The Elantra coupe shares its wheelbase with the sedan, but it's almost half an inch longer overall. The sporty SE features five-spoke 17-inch alloy wheels, fog lamps, and dual chrome exhausts. The four-door hatchback will be called the Elantra GT. Based on the European market Hyundai i30, it rides on a two-inch shorter wheelbase than the coupe and sedan and is nine inches shorter overall. Hyundai is positioning the GT as the enthusiast car in the Elantra range, offering it with variable steering and a tuned suspension. The standard engine for both models is Hyundai's 148 horsepower, 1.8 liter four-cylinder, and both cars will be offered with a choice of six-speed manual or automatic transmissions. The Elantra Coupe goes on sale here in the U.S. this spring, with the GT launching in the summer. Chrysler will replace the Dodge Challenger with a slightly smaller and lighter muscle car called the Barracuda. The Barracuda will be built on a new American-made rear-drive platform to be shared with a flagship Alfa Romeo model that could be built in sedan, coupe, and convertible versions. Chrysler Fiat CEO Sergio Marchionne told reporters at the Detroit Auto Show last month the company needed to stay with rear-wheel drive in the large car segment. He also linked the return of Alfa Romeo to the U.S. market to rear drive, saying the brand needed a premium flagship model to ensure a successful launch and suggesting it would potentially be a BMW rival. Chrysler sources have indicated the Challenger will not be redesigned or facelifted when the current model reaches the end of its life cycle. Ford plans to almost double the number of vehicles available with its turbocharged EcoBoost engines in 2012. Among the EcoBoost models planned for launch this year are a sporty 247 horsepower Focus ST, a 365 horsepower Taurus Police Interceptor, and versions of the 2013 Fusion and Escape. And starting this spring, the regular Taurus sedan will only be available with 2 and 3.5 liter EcoBoost engines. The new Fusion sedan and Escape SUV will be available with a choice of four-cylinder EcoBoost engines in 1.6-liter and 2-liter capacities. In the new Fusion, these engines will produce 179 and 237 horsepower, respectively. Ford sold almost 128,000 EcoBoost-powered vehicles in the U.S. in 2011. And the company's aggressive positioning of turbocharged engines as alternatives to larger naturally aspirated power plants has even proven successful in the full-size truck segment, with 42% of F-150s sold last year fitted with the 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6. Aston Martin showed its V12 Zagato as a concept car last May. Now the 510 horsepower coupe, designed as an homage to the iconic DB4 GT, is going into limited production. Motor Trend's Paul Horrell was on hand in Britain to give us an exclusive preview of this very exclusive new Aston. This is Paul Horrell for Motor Trend in the English Midlands, where we're about to see for the first time the latest in a series of collaborations between one of England's great sports car manufacturers and one of Italy's historic coach builders. This is the Aston Martin V12 Zagato. really celebrates 50 years of collaboration with Zagato and Aston Martin. The first car, the DB4 GT Zagato, was a very successful racing car. We launched this collaboration as a racing car at the Nürburgring. Yeah, this was all developed and designed at Aston Martin by the Aston Martin design team and myself, but in collaboration with Andrea Zagato. So if you like, it was a mini competition between Zagato and ourselves, and the Aston Martin design team ended up doing the whole of the design. Because it celebrates something very, very iconic, we wanted something, again, which would be equally as iconic into the future. There's no doubt sports car fans are going to be all over this thing at the Geneva show. And that event is one exciting new car launch after another. We'll be there covering it all. This is Paul Horrell in England for wide open throttle. 
GM showed two very different Chevy concept cars at last month's Detroit Auto Show, and now it wants the public's help in deciding which it should build. Motor Trend's Angus McKenzie and Edward Lowe are here to discuss which should be built and why. Angus, what is your pick? Well, my pick is the Code 130R. To me, it's an absolute no-brainer. There are any number of car companies out there that could build a small, stylish, front-drive coupe in this space, but not many could build a rear-drive car like this. There's uh, the opportunity to create a completely new model segment for Chevrolet here. I mean, agreed, it's, it's a no-brainer for, for me as a driving enthusiast, but I really do wonder if there's a, a business case there. Uh, I mean, it is a new segment for Chevy, agreed, uh, but, you know, Camaro and Mustang both have uh, entry-level V6 offerings in the you know, mid-20s uh, price range, and then Subaru and Scion have come out with the BRZ and the FRS. And of course, you can't forget about Hyundai that's already is in the space with the uh, Genesis Coupe, which, to be honest, hasn't sold very well. So I wonder, with everything that GM's already trying to do, can they make this work from a financial standpoint? And what about styling? A lot of consumers buy based on style. Well, that's the interesting thing is I actually think the true 140S is a much better looking car. It's uh, this cab forward profile, it's, it's very racy, the proportions are right, and frankly the 130R is a little awkward looking, it's got a little bit of the 130, the, sorry, the BMW 1 Series uh, kind of long nose, uh, short rear deck thing going on. Um, so yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but you know, when they, these cars were designed in, in conjunction with surveys with students at uh, UCLA and on the west side of LA high schools. The younger students, the ones under 35, all like the 130R. And I think it's because they sense something different in the car's proportions. But getting back to your business case thing, bear in mind this car's built on the same architecture that underpins the Cadillac ATS. So it, it's well funded, it's a flexible architecture, it's going to be used in the next generation Camaro as well. And I think cars like the Subaru BRZ and the Scion FRS are going to create more demand in the segment. Remember when Mazda launched the Miata, everyone said there wasn't a market for small open roadsters. Well, guess what? Within five years, everyone was building one of those cars. So I think it's a no-brainer. And I think if they don't build it, we'll be sitting here in five years' time saying Chevy missed an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, again, you're preaching to the choir when you talk about rear drive, turbocharged, sporty, compact dimensions. I mean, sign me up. All right, GM, as far as motor trend is concerned, the Chevy Code 130R is the car it should build. So that's it for this week's edition of Wide Open Throttle. If you have any questions or comments regarding any of this week's stories, please let us know and send us your feedback. And join us next week as we talk about the 2015 Acura NSX. What would you like to know about this radical made-in-America supercar? Send us your questions and I'll see you next week.